I'm Dana Denha, and you're watching FYI. Ann Arbor has welcomed a fresh face to the police department. Police Chief Andre Anderson has a long career of public service with plans to enhance the future of the AAPD. Ann Arbor should have a leader in the police department that knows what it means to accept authority with humility. The Office of Chief of Police. Or the Office of Chief of Police. For the city of Ann Arbor, Michigan. 35 years in law enforcement, I've served in many roles as an executive level leadership, but more importantly, what attracted me to Ann Arbor was the rich community and diversity that we have here, the city government, the relationship we have with the university. So I always believe it's really good for us to have a relationship with our, our universities, which have a lot of input with respect to bringing in evidence-based practices. It's really good for us to combine that with the community members that have really the, the, the real, real-time scenarios that, they, that they've seen, things they've experienced, that can help us uh, modify our approach. And then, of course, we have the police department's perspective on where they see things are going. And I think as we marry everyone as part of our solutions, then we'll have a better response to the community at large. Because all in all, our role is to make the, the community feel safe and to provide a better uh, service overall. My goal is just to create cohesive, collaborative, and authentic relationships from the police department and me setting the tone as a humble leader with this organization. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more in exactly 30 seconds. Life is all about learning, and our local community college makes developing new skills and obtaining knowledge fun and unforgettable through their non-credit personal enrichment courses. The Corporate Training and Lifelong Learning Department at Washtenaw Community College offers a variety of classes that meet a variety of people's interests. These are not classes that are college credit classes. These are classes that help to create um, meaningful experiences for the people in our community. We offer classes in three semesters, fall, winter, and spring, summer. Washington Community College is the community's college. We have citizens that are interested in a wide variety of interests, and they invest in the college through the millage. So we want to make sure that we offer something for everyone so that everyone's needs are met. We have something for everybody. They're fun, they're interesting and they're informative. And best of all, we have trainers that are passionate about teaching people skills and talents and bringing out the best in their abilities. For more on Washtenaw Community College's non-credit personal enrichment courses, visit wccnet.edu. Interested in how the many departments of the city government function? The Ann Arbor Community Academy gives residents a chance to experience this firsthand. Learn more in this month's City Roundup in 60. Hi, my name is Sarah Lanise with the City of Ann Arbor Clerk's Office. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about the Ann Arbor Community Academy. The Community Academy is a program where community members interested in the city's long-term plans and day-to-day -day operations have a chance to participate in interactive sessions with city staff across different departments. City staff hopes participants will be motivated to play a more active role in shaping the future of Ann Arbor after participating in this program. Graduates from our academy are highly involved in our community and currently serve on City Council, the City Planning Commission, the Public Art Commission, and as election inspectors. You can find more information, including how to sign up at a2gov.org slash a2ca. 
Public art brightens the landscape of the city. It creates conversations, so showcases social injustice, hopes for the future, and brings a certain quality of life to the area. Joining me is Sophie Grillier with the Ann Arbor Public Art Commission, here to give us details on the annual Golden Paintbrush Awards. Welcome to the show, Sophie. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you associated with the West Side Art Hop, or have you in the past? Yes, I organize the West Side Art Hop. Okay, yes, that's what I thought, because I believe you were on uh, one of the stories I've done in it in the past. Okay, good, good, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the West Side Art Hop is so cool and fun, but now we're going to talk a little bit about your work with the Ann Arbor Public Art Commission. Uh, can you tell us how you sort of became a member, just to let people know? Um, I just saw a, an advert saying they were looking for people to be on the commission, and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'd like to see more art in the city. So... I applied and um, it's, you know, quite an official process and that you get recommended to the mayor and then the mayor says you're okay. And then, you know, so, and then you have to find out what all the rules and regulations are. So it's quite official, but the point is to make Ann Arbor more fun to live in and to have, you know, nice surprises around corners and things like that. So that's the point. I will say uh, the work that the Public Art Commission has done is so exciting to me. I love seeing when new art pops up around the area. And I also think it's influenced other organizations to create public art as well. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that because part of the part of the idea of the, the Golden Paintbrush Award particularly is to make people think, oh, this is part of Ann Arbor's public art or, oh, I could do a thing or hey, I saw that great thing and I'd like other people to know about it so that it it grows and grows from there, you know. Can you tell us exactly what the Golden Paintbrush Awards are and how you decide the recipients? Well, first of all, that we've decided to do every, every alternate year, so it'll be in odd-numbered years, I think. And uh, so it's uh, an award. It's not a big financial award or a big gold cup or anything like that. It's... Um, it's a, a, a beautiful Motawi tile and some, some certificates awarded by the mayor. So the idea is really just to draw attention and, you know, give accolades and things like that. So it's not a hefty prize, but it's, it's appreciation and, and saying, yes, we, we love you doing this. Please do more. And everybody else do some too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd rather have a Matawi tile than a big gold trophy in my house. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so you <laughs> tiles have lots of places you can put them, but gold cup maybe not so much. <laughs> so you work with the special projects uh, with the Anna Republic Art Commission. So are you one of the people that helps sort of narrow down what could potentially be Golden Paintbrush Award winners? Um, well, it's actually not us who decide the narrowing down. We're inviting people to join. We kind of figured out what questions to ask and um, what should be on the, the form. So anybody at all can say, I saw this cool thing in Ann Arbor and I would like you to give it an award. Even the person who made it can say that or somebody who just happens to be passing through Ann Arbor can say that. As long as the work is publicly available and viewable in Ann Arbor, then, and it doesn't have to be visual art either. It can be any kind. It could be music or theater or dance in the street or anything, you know, so it doesn't have to be visual arts. And then if they uh, nominate it, it becomes just one of the nominees and it can be nominated by just one person or hundreds of people. It really doesn't matter. The point is to say, what's out there? Tell us about it. And what do you like? and get as many nominations as we can. And then we find some judges and uh, the Art Commission uh, doesn't do the judging. So the chair or vice chair will be there to sort of help the judges figure it out, what the, what's going on or make sure the tech side of it's going okay and all that. But we don't judge, we invite uh, people from the city, you know, business people, artists, all kinds of people. Um, there are three to five judges, and they pick the ones they they think are best according to the the criteria. So it's um it's pretty open, and the idea is it should be pretty flexible, 
and the judges should be able to sort of say, yeah, I think that fits in. It's not about keeping people out. It's about trying to keep people in, uh, in the con contention part. What are the types of questions that maybe you're, that are being asked about these projects? So first of all, I mean, there are three main things. One is that it should be um, the creativity and craftsmanship should be there. So that's what we mean by good art, you know, that it's kind of reasonably well made. It's not going to fall apart. It's not going to endanger anybody. And it's, you know, it's well put together and thought through. So there's that side. And then there's civic engagement, which is an important part. So it should have some connection with the community, not just an artist who's done a painting and in their studio and that was the beginning, middle and end of it. If the artist has invited people to contribute to how the painting should happen, it might be, but it still has to be visible to the public. So, you know, if you invite your neighbours round to make a, a snow scenario in your front yard that everyone can see, then yes. But if you just make a little thing in the back of your home that no one could see, then no. So it's uh, it does have to have community engagement. And uh, wonderfully enough, there's quite a lot of that going on in Ann Arbor. And uh, there are things, there are lots of things which I don't think have been nominated yet that I think are community events that people just put out in their front yards for people to see um, or are doing with friends or with, with kids from schools or, you know, all kinds of things that are happening. And it just has to be something that anybody could see and it's not hidden away or you have to join something or go in somewhere that's not easily accessible. Does it matter it, how long it's on display? No, it could just be a whiz bang and, and everyone went, ooh, and that was it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I also like that you mentioned that it doesn't have to be visual, that it could be a play or, you know, poetry in the street or dancing in the street. I mean, we have all these events now where Main Street's closed and you see a lot of different art happening. It took so long for Main Street to realize they could close. I think it's fabulous. And uh Oh, another good outcome of the pandemic, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I anyway. agree with that. I love, I do not mind not being able to drive on Main Street on those days when it's closed. I love taking my family down there. You do dance. Uh, we danced in the street this summer. It was amazing. Right, right. It's lovely. And being able to just sit out and dine and no no cars around, it's lovely. I mean, that the, some people were saying it wouldn't be less accessible for, for people who were disabled. But I think that, you know, there's still sidewalks and some parking spots quite nearby that people can get to it from. So hopefully that's not created any problems and it's it's such a wonderful thing. So, so yes. you and mentioned number, number two, so with civic engagement. Yeah. And visibility and sustainability. So I kind of covered that a little bit as well. It it has to be seen. And also, you know, if you're buying in a bunch of plastic that is not going to go anywhere as a I mean if you reuse some that's already there then that's fine to make it into something new but if you're doing something that's really environmentally a bit dubious then that's probably not so good so that comes into it as well does it matter when the project happened like you said you've seen a lot of things that haven't been nominated that you're like man this is something that could be nominated does it have to be something that's created within that two year time frame when you are doing it or could it be like you know this was a mural that was painted 10 years ago it's never been nominated but it looks amazing and it has a great message yeah no it does as long as it hasn't won before yeah I can't remember whether it has to not be nominated before but definitely hasn't won before but since we've only just restarted there's that's just about everything <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean so the art center has backed a lot of murals so some of those have been already um, nominated but um, yeah it doesn't really matter when and if it's something that's a long-term thing then sustainability means it has to be able to survive living a long time and not fall apart but um, it can be honestly it can be virtually anything and it's better to nominate something and in the very rare case that it's not you know eligible for some reason then so sorry but you know it's 99 times out of 100 it would be so go for it yeah I also think you shouldn't hesitate to nominate yourself if you're one of the people because other people might not be thinking about nominating you know it's it's really if you just get 
your name in there, then it's up to the judges. Yeah, yeah. Throw your name in the hat or get your best friend to. It doesn't matter either way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so blow your trumpet. Sure, why not? <laughs> Can you talk about, uh, you mentioned sort of the criteria, that, but when the judges get together, are there certain things that they have to look at or is it the same? So um, people should have some... Uh, hopefully have photographs or videos or whatever of the thing they're nominating or a link to them or some person we can go to to find out what those things are. Obviously, the more you can provide, the easier it is for us and the judges. But yeah, it's some, something to show what it was that happened and not just, hey, there was this one thing on some street, which I can't remember that. Probably not going to work. <laughs> but as much as much as you can so that we know what it is and why you why you would like to nominate it well this year you had two winners but you could have up to four potentially is that right so there are four awards that can be given and um when the three uh when three are chosen then the public gets to choose which one they want to be the overall winner the people's choice award um so the judges pick and then they say these are our top picks and then the public can pick from them one for an additional award. Oh, nice. So you do get public involvement then towards the end of the process. Yeah, yeah. I think that helps not just with making people feel happier with the art that's the winner, but also making more people realise it's happening, feel engaged, people talk about it more that way. So it's good too. Yeah, I agree. I, I've always enjoyed when the city sort of lets you choose art, you know, like when they did that, when they were like painting the water tower and they were like, which design do you like? And then I, it's exciting. Like if the design you like wins, you're like, oh, I picked that one. That's cool. Yeah, that one yeah, won, you know? Yeah. yeah, I still haven't gotten over my pick of a different thing being being awarded. <laughs> <laughs> Well, why don't you tell us about this year's winners that will reign for the next two years? Okay, so yes, the, the reigning winners were, were two. There was Cultureverse, who did this wonderful Say Yes Fest with uh, an amazing artist whose name is yeah, Petal Sandcastle. So Petal Sandcastle is a an amazing force of nature person who makes things happen, and they created all these incredible events with Cultureverse and Cultureverse helped them happen. They have a, a gallery space that they were using on Main Street and then actual events in Main Street and various other places and just engaging young, young people to do projects and having sort of dancing and drag fests and art and all kinds of things. Oh, it's so, so it's fun, the stuff fun they were doing, event. yeah. And it was for the whole month of August, all kinds of different things happening. So it was just super fun. And, and I think people enjoyed it. And the idea of Say Yes Fest was that, you know, instead of saying, oh, maybe I shouldn't, maybe should I shouldn't to say yes, you know, let me try yeah. this thing I haven't tried before or why not, you know. So get people out there meeting each other again and smiling. Yeah. Believe me, I spent uh, more than a little bit of time with my daughter, like painting in the street with culture verse, drawing chalk, all, and hula hooping, right. all kinds of stuff, you know. Yeah, and there's something about just doing it with other people as well, because I mean, you can you can be home and, and drawing and having a really nice time, but it's a completely different experience if a whole bunch of people are doing it and. Uh, I think especially post-pandemic, we just appreciate that so much. And sometimes it takes people a little extra push to 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 do it. So it's good. It's good for everyone, I think. Yeah, I agree. And then the other big winner was Embracing Our Differences. Yes. Yeah, so this is a terrific project um, that Nancy Margolis has been uh, the driving force behind. And they have these enormous uh, posters, like sort of billboards, really. And people send in their artwork and ideas, and it gets blown up this huge size. And it's all about embracing our differences, as the name says. And there's one in Ypsilanti and one in Ann Arbor in, in Gallup Park. And they actually have docents going around and talking about 
what it is. So you just don't just go, oh, that's cool. You can actually think about it, engage in conversation and have more of a, a deeper understanding of the ideas behind it. So I think that's a really interesting additional layer. Yeah, I think the really fun thing about that twofold is you can see it when you're driving. So the mm -hmm. those billboards are so large that when you're driving by, you can see them. And then you want to go in the park and get closer and, right. and read the quotes and, that go with the artwork. But a lot of times it's actually like young kids, students and stuff making the artwork too, which is really cool because when you go up to those billboards, you can really see like who made it, who wrote the quote, what grade they were in, where they're from. I think that part to me was super cool. And having a seven-year-old go with me, like I went I went there and shot video footage of it. And I had yeah. my seven-year-old go with me and we're looking and she goes, this girl goes to my school. And it was really exciting for her to see someone that she could sort of relate to that was making this huge piece of art that was in a park in Ann Arbor. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's kind of part of the golden paintbrush ethos, I would say, is that people realize that they could they could do this thing. They could either do it or, 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 or bring it forward and make it, you know, be recognized. So it's it's really like not art is the thing that somebody else does at some other time and place. It's it's something we all do as as a collective activity, even if it's only looking. You know, that's part of the collective activity and talking about it with our friends and family. So, yeah, that's a really important aspect of it. And you mentioned Nancy Margolis, which for her, I mean, her story of it, it's pretty cool, too, because she basically just saw an embracing our differences in Florida and was like, we could use that in Ann Arbor and, and did all the work and brought it here. I mean, that's pretty sweet in itself. It is. Um, some people just sort of take things and run with them and we need those people so much and uh yeah so they need they need our emotional support and our financial support and our physical help sometimes so all of those things happen like one of the nominees was um an artist called tiana um tiana, i'm just losing her last name for a minute but she did these murals and she got volunteers to come in and help to paint them and they all had such a great weekend painting together uh, so yeah there's a, a on a bridge over the, the river so oh yeah yeah I actually I know exactly what mural you're talking about Clemens, yeah well before we go we're just about out of time why why should people support projects like this and want to be a part of public art um well because without art what, what are we you know we're just kind of mechanically going through life and everybody can be an artist in some way um, everybody either has a voice or a visual understanding or or ways of making one thing happen with another everybody is some kind of artist and some people are really good at su supporting other people and bringing them forward and some people are really great at flowering and not so good at organizing and there are so many different kinds of people in the world and it's the connection between all those different kind of people that can make a public event happen and the more of those public events we have the happier we seem to be so you know let's go for it really why would we not exactly well thank you sophie for being on the show well thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed being here for more on this and other programs, visit a2gov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor to see all that we have to offer. And remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI.